right, all right. I don't feel like talking, so let's make this quick. And first, I want to look at the triple Qs, which are still in the range. And a quick reminder, the range I'm looking at here is 473 up to about 485. And this chart is starting to look bearish. We have all of the lower highs. We have another lower high trying to develop here from this rejection in the low 480s. And if we break 473, there's a very good chance we just go straight down to fill this gap right around 465 and test that rising 20 daily moving average. Now, the only caution I have here is this looks so easy and so obvious. And typically the market doesn't like to give anything away for free. So I will not be surprised if we also just stay within this range and push back to the top of the range to test it yet again. And do keep in mind the possibility of breaking the top of the range brings us to the gap fill at 493. So getting bearish here is fine. You just have to manage your risk at the top of the range. If we break through the bottom of the range, there is a very good chance we are going for that leg lower. But as you can see, we did not break the bottom of the range. And I would rather see confirmation from price before getting too aggressive because we do have a bull trend. So shorting at support is always a risk. You have to keep in mind support is where the buyers show up. So if the buyers do show up here, do not be surprised if we push back to the top of that range. And as long as we're in the range, just either wait on the sideline or trade the range. So this is a good time to be a day trader. Remember, if you're range trading, you're buying at support and you're selling at resistance. No bias move like water. If we break down below the bottom of that range, get risk off because there's no telling how low we can go, even though we do have a target down there at 465. Nothing says we can't continue to go lower than that. On the SPY ETF, we were down 0.24% today, and we are looking relatively stronger than the NASDAQ 100, which is not really helping the bull's case because the NASDAQ 100 should be leading. And if it's leading, it's not going higher. It looks like it could be leading the way lower. And that could mean SPY is going back down to the bottom range at 556. And then below that, we go to 549. And below that, we fill a gap at 545. Now, if we can break the top of the range at 565, then we will be looking for a brand new all-time high. And that brand new all-time high would be somewhere between 570 and 581. Now, do not be surprised if we don't get the all-time high because as I said, the NASDAQ 100 is looking weak. We'll need strength from the tech sector if the SPY ETF is going to break out to a new all-time high. So 565 is the top of the range, 556 is the bottom. If we break the bottom of the range, get risk off because we could be going a lot lower with the obvious target being right around 545. And then below that, we could obviously continue to cascade lower and continue to break through support. So there's definitely a market I would be paying attention to. We're getting into the later part of the summer where volatility is going to kick in. And it is an election year. And keep in mind, in election years, volatility typically sticks around. And we now have nearly 100% chance that Jerome Powell is going to cut rates in September. And keep in mind with rate cuts, a lot of people are thinking that is bullish. These are the same people that told you that the rate hikes and the rate pause were bearish. They have no idea what they're talking about. There is no way you should just assume a rate cut is bullish. You need to follow price and let price do all the talking. A rate cut could very likely be bearish, especially if the price is looking bearish and we're breaking through support zones. So let the price action do all the talking, move like water, manage risk around these critical levels. We have very clear risk levels with the range that we're in. And once we break out of this range, we will likely start a trend in that direction. So if you want access to all of my intraday updates, my trade ideas, and my technical analysis, that's in my Discord server. And you can find out how to join my Discord server by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always I will see you in the next episode.